good morning everybody happy wednesday it is a uh, lovely wednesday when happy monday did i just say wednesday i meant monday. <laughs> monday it's monday obviously it's monday if i think it's wednesday uh good morning everybody welcome to a live stream we are going to continue with the booby cardi <laughs> or construction of a granny square scent sweater or cardigan and just before we got going today i pulled the family to see um, what they thought in terms of colors for the build out of the front of the sweater. So I'm going to just grab my little sketchbook here. I hope you all had a lovely weekend and you've got a project to work on in front of you. This is the cardigan style that we're going for. I think I actually have a, a layout of it too. So this is the layout that I'm working with. I've got a panel of three granny squares running down the front of my cardigan. I've got a back panel of nine. I will not be doing granny square sleeves. I actually mulled about sleeves construction most of the weekend and I haven't fully committed to that yet. So I'm going to work on the build out of the front of the cardigan. Now there's a bunch of ways you can do this. You can use half granny squares. You can just crochet back and forth. I want to continue the shell stitch. So I'm going to use the straight shell stitch back and forth across the front of my two panels. I'm going to work out one side and then I'm going to work out the other. And the idea is that it will mimic the granny square. So I mean, I'm using these granny squares. It's the shell stitch and it, the shell stitch will mimic the build of the granny square. But working straight back and forth is so much faster. Um, and I can do nice long passes of color. So I was sort of messaged, I, I kind of pulled the family before the live stream to see what they thought in terms of color. This is a Halloween themed cardigan. Um, I am gonna try and pull colors out of this, grant of the existing granny squares. So some are mentioned green, because obviously green is very Halloween-y, and I do have a green, but there's no green anywhere else in the cardigan. So I'm gonna reserve use of the green um if it comes up somehow that it makes sense to put some green in somewhere then i've got like a nice halloweeny green but i think i want to focus on the colors that already kind of pop up inside these granny squares so i'm going to ignore the red and i'm going to ignore the blue um because i want to focus more on kind of halloweeny stuff so i've got the orange that i'm using to stitch all of the squares together i've got white i've got black and as a happy accident i went digging to see if i had purple now a lot of you know that i've been having trouble finding purple uh, i got my hands on some for a lens mill store uh, sale that was a few weekends ago and i got some discontinued burnat super value in is this damson and this purple is so darn close to the original purple. I mean, it might be a, I don't know, a hair off in terms of purple shade. So it's practically exactly the same purple. So I'm pretty stoked because that means that I can either make some more granny squares if I want to and match them up, or I can at least just build out the front panels of the cardigan using a purple that's pretty darn close. So now I have, I've got options that I didn't think I was going to have when I first started this whole granny square cardigan. This is some random purple I've got. It doesn't really fit in, so I'm just going to put it aside. Again, if I feel like I need something like a little detail or an accent, I've got a purple and a green that will stand out a little bit more. But more importantly, I've got a purple that blends with the rest of the purple here. So I'm going to be using a five millimeter hook. Five, I'm sorry, five and a half millimeter hook. I'm pretty sure that's what I used to make these granny squares. And if I slip my hook through the edge stitches, it fits very neatly and comfortably. So I'm pretty sure it was my five and a half. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to work granny shell stitch back and forth, back and forth. If you've never worked the shell stitch back and forth, we have a tutorial on that. We even have a free pattern on our website. So if you want to incorporate some straight stitch granny square, um, or I should say straight granny shell stitch, into a granny cardigan or a granny sweater that you're making, you might find that a very helpful little video because it helps you turn corners when you get to the edge of a square. I'm just gonna have a sip of my water here and uh, a big hello to Mr. and Stitches. Good I just Good morning, everyone. I tr jumped into chit chat. Hello. Without... <laughs> um, we've got a question from uh, Deanna here. <clears throat> um, does the Etsy shop 
project journal have general pages to fill or are they monthly? Can you um, answer the, that question? Yeah. So the project journal kit that we have available for sale in our Etsy shop is designed based on how I keep tabs on my projects. I don't have my, my main project journal. Uh, it's a big binder. It's a big pink binder full of all sorts of neat stuff. And to be perfectly honest, I've stuffed it somewhere and I can't find it. So <laughs> I know it's somewhere. And when I find it, I'll be bringing it out again. But we've done some videos on how I do project journaling. And it's uh, the kit is designed to work with a three ring binder. It's got a project notes page in it, among other things. Um, and the notes page is constructed so that you can um, keep track of everything to do with the project include um, some samplers if you want to include some stitch sampling, uh, samples of the yarn, uh, photographs of the project, this whole thing. So it's kind of a way to document your projects and also to keep track of information on things that you might make more than once. So I use it kind of half scrapbook style and half um, useful information so that, you know, a few years down the road, if I want to revisit a kind of project and make it again, I don't have to go through the whole um, the whole process of trying to figure out what the best yarn would be or what colors or what worked best or if there were issues with a particular weight or a fiber. Uh, and there's also um, an area to keep it alongside the printed pattern um, if you keep printed patterns of uh, projects that you do. Um, and there's other things in that kit, just sort of some helpful tips and tricks. Um, we have also got um, some other things that go along with it. Like you, we've got seasonal planners, which are kind of monthly. Um, we have an actual calendar, which is like your typical calendar that you would print off and you'd have like your your um, calendar days of the week um, per month. And then every month has some extra stuff to go along with that. And you can include that in your journal kit, too, if you're kind of keeping a year long uh, project journal that's more like, you know, documenting a whole year's worth of projects. So we've got a whole bunch of different little things in the shop that all kind of mix together. But the, the main project journal kit is basically about uh, journaling your projects, so keeping track of them, uh, information to go with it, that sort of thing. I hope that answers the question. Um, um, and before I go on, I want to thank Nico for gifting a membership before the stream got going. And I see Don has joined Alpaca. Welcome, Don. Thank you so much. I think Don is a renew. Yes, Don might be. Well, it says welcome, and I just wanted to, and I see the pretty little colored uh, avatar picture there, but. So thank you, Don. <laughs> Uh, okay, and um, did did that pretty much answer the question? Do you think, Mister Stitches? Um, well, I guess we'll uh, find out. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure. I think so. All right. Um, well, in that case, I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to start building out the middle of my granny card again. So, I'm um, just a quick note on the side seams. So, let me get my yarns out of the way here, so I can function a little bit better. So this is the front. These are the front panels. We're looking at the right side. This is the inside. Obviously, I haven't bothered weaving in any of my tails yet. And this is the side seam. So I tried it on over the weekend and I clipped it into place. And we talked about sleeve holes. You know, you want to make sure that you're, it's big enough for your arm to get through and be comfortable. And I'm thinking that I might make myself really big open sleeve holes so that I'm very comfortable and I can wear other things underneath this cardigan. So not just like a, a skinny little t-shirt or something. So I might start my sleeve holes halfway down. Like my side seams might only be like one and a couple, like one full granny and a couple of shelves up from that. And because I'm still thinking about how I'm gonna build my sleeves, I'm not gonna bother stitching up my side seams today. I'm just gonna focus on the front build out. So here we go. I'm gonna turn it sideways. I'm gonna start this is the um, right side front of the cardigan. We're now looking at it sideways. And I'm going to start with some purple. So purple, the family kind of voted that I would use some purple, some orange, maybe a little black and white. So I think everybody's kind of looking for a general mix of those colors. Obviously, there's more purple in this than there is any other color. So I think I might have to do five or six rows built out on either side. So at the moment, I'm thinking maybe two rows of the purple to sort of reestablish that nice purple color. 
maybe a row of orange, maybe a row of white or black, just so it really stands out. So you're gonna get that nice color striping going vertical, so from my chin down to my waist. And then I'll finish it off with a couple rows of purple. And that's just the build out, that's not the trim. Um, so here I go. I hope you guys can sort of see this. It's pretty clear today, I think, so with any luck, you should be able to see what I'm doing. But we have done this um, during a previous live, done a little bit of straight granny shell stitch, and we do have a tutorial, so if you need to see it in a different light or with different colored yarn, I'll show you that later. In fact, I can even get the rest of this sweater out of the way. So let me just put it to the side. This is another helpful thing about not having done up the side seams yet, so you can really see this is the front right panel. I'm going to be working from the waist up to the neck and back down again, so I'll be turning with each row. So I'm going to join my yarn with a slip stitch in the bottom space, and I'm going to chain three to begin. So I've got a bottom corner shell stitch here. I'm going to chain three and I'm going to start. Goodness gracious. DLS, thank you for picking up a pattern at our Etsy shop. Many, many thanks. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to start with a shell or just start with the straight stitch. And I think I'm going to start with a shell. So I'm going to work two more double crochet into that space. And I'm going to continue with the same shell stitch that I used in the actual granny square. So in my granny squares I would work a shell which is three double crochet and then I would chain one for the space and then shell. So three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one. So I'm going to use the same stitch working across here. So I'm going to chain one, I'm going to skip over top of that shell, and then it's just the regular granny shell stitch. Three double crochet, chain one into each chain one space. <laughs> By the way, that was Deanna in the shop. Oh, thank you, Deanna. I hope you got yourself the project journal kit. Oh. <laughs> we'll have to check. And also a big thank you to Kimberly for the membership milestone. Kimberly! Kimberly's been a member for 17 months. Good morning! Thanks for the tutorial. Well, you are welcome, Kimberly. I hope everything we're doing in these little live sessions is helpful if you are sort of helping to uh, develop a granny square sweater or cardigan. I think often when we embark on something like a cardigan or a wearable, we get worried that, you know, there's only really one way to do it, or if we start experimenting, we might make some strange mistakes. No, no. There's a million ways to make a sweater or a cardigan. So the fun thing to do is to just start. Just start. You never know how it's going to work out. And it'll probably be just fine. Would you look at that? That purple is practically identical. Can you see a difference in those two shades? I sure can't. Dawn! Dawn has been a member for 31 months. Thank you for the membership milestone, Dawn. Dawn says, glad to be back. Hope you are both very well. We are pretty decent this morning. Thank you, Dawn. I hope you're all doing well yourselves today. I mean, it's Monday. The least we can ask for a Monday is that we all like at least have a decent feeling day. <laughs> I can't believe how much this looks like the same color. Okay, so I'm coming up on a seam. Um, because I'm using a shell stitch chain one, um, I'm going to try two things as I cross this seam. So here I've got a corner space from one granny and a corner space from the next granny, and I've got that seam in between. So sometimes what I like to do is put the shell right into the seam, and sometimes I like to put a shell here and then a shell there, but I don't want to make the edge too wide and I don't want to make it too narrow. So I'm going to try working a shell directly into the seam edge, and if I feel like it's not too... Um, too tight or too loose or if there's like not too much of a gap I'll keep that uh, because I am chaining one on either side so let's see here so I go shell chain one shell chain one shell chain one I'm skipping over that corner space let's see how this looks shell chain one Yeah, 
I feel like that's 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 fine. So into that shell, I'm going to use the corner spaces and the seam, which is kind of wide, to be the general the general uh, footing of a shell. And I think because I've got a chain one on either side of it, it gives it just enough stretch that it doesn't look like it's strained and it's not too many stitches in the same place so that it looks like it's, it's rippling. So I think that works out just fine. Um, yeah, and that will help keep that seam nice and strong as well. So that's what I'm gonna do all the way up. Of course, you only have to worry about that on your first pass because you're only uh, working across seams on the first establishing row and then it's just the regular shell stitch from there on out. Maria member for 48 months. Thank you Maria. Maria says good afternoon. I'm working on the cottage shawl for myself and watching. Well welcome welcome. Glad you could make it and I love that shawl. That one is our tutorial that went up on Friday. That's my new favorite. <laughs> I know I say that about everything. But I really love that shawl. It's so cozy. I love all those shades of brown. That was uh, somebody asked, Paige was asking about um, the specific colorway of that cake is chocolate, hot chocolate. It was a Bernat pop. Um, Karen cakes are really good for that project too. Any of the big self striping cakes. And then you sort of just turn your brain off. It's really nice. Oh, we've got a, a quick fix um, a tutorial coming for you this week on a really easy way to match your stripes when you're using self-striping cakes. So instead of just finishing a cake and starting the next one, we've got a, a way to kind of help you figure that out and, and have an uninterrupted color striping. So we'll have that coming for you a little later this week. Yeah, this looks just fine. I'm going to continue this all the way up. <clears throat> Oops. Sometimes if there's not enough slack on my yarn, it kind of pulls the stitch out as I'm trying to make it. <laughs> there, I do it again. All right, and because I'm using the shell stitch, every row begins and ends the same way. So this row began with a shell, I'm going to make sure I end it the same way. And then the next row will just begin with a double crochet and it will end the same way. So here I am up at the top. So this seam here is the right across the top of my shoulder. So instead of working into the seam edge, I'm going to work into the corner because I'm not going to continue. This is just building out the front panels. So I'm going to finish with a shell. I'm going to chain, let's see, shall I, three is my post. I guess one more would create the chain one space. So I'm going to chain four in turn because this row is the row where I work, start and finish with a post. So I've flipped my work. I'm going to keep most of my sweater in my lap here. I'm going to just pile this up at the side, make sure I'm not, what did I do? Did I switch this? I twisted this up. There we go. All right, chain four, turn, sip of water, check in with the chat. Hey, congratulations, Storm, that's great news. All right, okay, so now I'm going to crochet back. I'm gonna stay with the purple for now because I think I want to establish that um, inner work with two rows of purple. And then I'm gonna do a row of another color, a row of another color, and then two rows of purple. And I'm gonna mimic that same thing on the other side. So the great shell stitch straight. First row I'm starting and finishing with a shell. And then, and then the second row is going to start and finish with a single post. So I'm chaining four, that counts as a double crochet chain one. And then I'm going to immediately start that shell stitch in the next space. So the usual three double crochet, chain one, 
in a space. And I will zip down through here and then we'll pick a color to be the third row. I'm thinking, I'm thinking the middle two colors, one of them is going to be orange and the other one is going to be either black and white, but I can't decide, I can't decide which one's going to come first. Yes, Storm, we have a zillion baby <laughs> related crochet tutorials. We've got blankets and toys. We've got a really cute little first cardigan, which is really simple to make. We have uh, the shaker. Oh yeah, we've got the we've baby. We've got the cardigan. Little, the little shaker toy. Um, many, many, many blankets. Yeah. Um, Lots of fun stuff. Making baby stuff is so much fun because it's small. It doesn't take very long to yeah, make. Small toys. Mm-hmm. Okay. So two solid rows of, <clears throat> excuse me, purple straight shell stitch. That's a nice way to start this middle build out. And it's just, it's a lot quicker. I like the look of half granny squares down the front. Um, I like the look of a whole bunch of things actually, um, drawing attention to the center front of a granny <laughs> cardigan. Goodness gracious, Pamela! Thank you, Pamela! Pamela's picked up a pattern at her Etsy shop. Uh, but I also like just the the speed of using that straight stitch. Plus, it almost looks like you're you you're making long, uh, granny rectangles down the front of your cardigan. So here we go. I'm gonna straighten this out again so you can see it. So now I'm looking at the front. This is the front right. You know, another thing that I like that this has done is that it kind of creates a straight line it, it sort of pulls it pulls those granny squares into more of a straight line so now I have like an even edge down the front and I've got two rows of purple so here's the next question uh, the, the other side is going to be mirror image so I'm going to have two rows of purple a color a color two rows of purple and then the other side will be the same thing it'll be two rows of purple the first color the second color and then two rows of purple again um, so, do I start with orange, do I, or does the orange kind of like, do I go purple, orange, black, purple, orange, white, or purple, black, orange, purple, white, orange? Maybe we should do a quick poll, Mr. and Stitches. Let's do a sure. poll. Um, I had one running, but oh. I'll, I'll uh, end that one, and then we'll do the new one. Okay, so we're going to poll everybody to see what color I go. Do I do... Uh, orange then white, orange then black, or white then orange, black then orange. So okay, that's... You have to keep these polls less complicated. Um, <laughs> and in the meantime, I'm going to fasten off my color over here. Um, and then I'm going to, while that poll's running, I'm going to build the first two purple rows on the left hand side. So just to give everybody up to speed. Let's lay it down flat again. So here's the okay, front. I'm need a repeat of that. Sure. Um, so this is this is for the color patterning across the front of the cardigan. So what order do I go in? Um, in fact, let's just make it simple. Orange then neutral, which will be a black or a white, or neutral and then orange. Have you tried making the cottage shawl for Friday's tutorial? Oh, good poll, Mister. No, 46%. We'll be making it later. 43%. Yes, 10. Hey, that's fantastic. So there's the first two. I'm going to do the second. I'm going to I'm going to start this on the other side while we're deciding 
uh, what color order to do the stripes in. And because I went, worked across the front and then turned it, I have to do it the opposite direction on this side, but it's gonna be the same. Okay, I need to clarify this. So you want me to put in options, orange, neutral, or neutral orange? Yes, orange, then neutral, like a, nor a stripe of orange, or and then a neutral, and we'll decide on the neutral. Okay, okay, gotcha. Afterwards, or neutral first, then orange, so yeah. Just two options, that makes it easy, and then we will decide what the neutral is going to be. Okay, off it goes. Great, okay, in the meantime, I am going to work on the two rows of purple on the other side so that I can give you guys a chance to just sort of take your time with the pool. So, I'm doing exactly the same thing on the other front side of the cardigan. And they will mirror image each other, which, you know, makes sense. Two rows purple on both sides. I am just so delighted that this purple is practically exactly the same to the purple that I, I had made these granny squares out of all those years ago. I mean, these granny squares are old. Same thing, putting the shell in the middle of the seam. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. And continue. Suzanne asks, where do I find part one and two, please? Um, uh, I guess the easiest way would be to go to our channel homepage because they're some of the most recent videos. If Yeah, if you go to um, the channel homepage and then click on lives, yeah. they're all in perfect order they're there. They're in order. Yeah. So uh, We will be creating a little playlist. Um, we haven't got that going yet because this is still relatively new. Um, I will link the channel homepage in the chat so you sh you can just click on that so i am just nearing the end of that first row of purple shell stitch on the left panel front. I'm going to turn around, do the second stripe back. Ooh, that looked a bit loose. No, that's okay. And then um, we will see what the poll has to say, and we will start with that. Nico has gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Nico. Let's see. Oh, Maeve won it. Wonderful. Four to turn. And now I work back the other way. Thank you so much, Nico. Nico actually made a really pretty granny cardigan and she sent me a photograph and I was going to share it this morning uh, and then I had to update my software <laughs> and I didn't get back to it. So I will be sharing that this afternoon. You can all take a look at the cardigan that Nico made. It looks really cool. Fall starts this weekend. I'm super excited about that. I love the fall. It's all uh, ponchos and shawls and cardigans. This is so much quicker, I feel, than whipping up a bunch of individual granny squares and sewing them together again. So I kind of like I know that you're you're interrupting the the look of the squares a little bit, but this is a this is a granny this is a Halloween granny cardigan, so I don't mind it being a little bonkers. But I do like the idea of 
taking like you've got these kind of crazy squares to begin with these squares were made out of scraps so the in the insides of the squares are all kind of a jumble of different colors so creating um and i didn't want to recreate them because i don't have a lot of these colors anymore so working the straight granny shell stitch um, back and forth to build out the two front panels gives me the opportunity to kind of calm down <laughs> the wildness of those squares but keep the actual stitch pattern going and work it a lot quicker than it would take me normally to make a bunch of squares and stitch them together. So I'm really like, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this turns out. And once again, I'm delighted that you're all along for the ride. <laughs> Chain one and double crochet into the end. That finishes the row. So that's two rows of straight granny shell stitch in purple to start the other side. I will fasten off Mr. Stitches. You can close down that pole. Let's see what I'm doing for the next two colors. In the meantime, let's get this turned around. Let's see what we're doing here. Okay, am I looking at the inside or the outside? This is... So move these out of the way, put the purple aside. So already this is starting to look, oh, and don't forget guys, if you're making one of these yourself, you want to keep trying it on. Don't worry if it looks boxy. I mean, after all, it's literally made using squares. Once it is on your form, especially if you're a lady, we've got curves and everything will stretch over those lovely curves we have and those, that boxy shape will just sort of disappear. Um, but this is how the basic construction is going to start. It is gonna look a little boxy, but that's why we create um, a little bit of shaping as we do our trim. And that's way down the road. First, I wanna make sure my two, two edges start coming together nicely. So I'm already in two rows on either side. And this is helping to continue that purple look. You see how it's also kind of starting to calm down all the wildness of those squares, but we're gonna bring it back now with a couple of stripes of color. So the pole, orange then neutral 63%, neutral then orange 36%, perfect. Okay, while I do the row of orange on either side, you guys are gonna tell me whether it's gonna be a black stripe or a white stripe after the uh, purple, I'm sorry, after the orange. So Mr. and Stitches, you can start another pole Black or white? That's literally a yes or no question. Now that's my kind of pole. <laughs> Black or white? Black or white. So I'm going to do this row of orange. I think I might start this row with a standing double crochet because why not? So I'm going to hold you. And what's this for? This is the next stripe. The next stripe. So is it black or white? So this row starts with a shell because the last row started and ended with a single post. So there's that. I'll weave that tail in later. And it's the same old shell stitch pattern. Three double crochet, chain one in every single space. And this row will end with a shell because it began with a shell. Krista, you're, you're having the same issue with gravity that I am. <laughs> the older we get, the more our curves move around. You still have the curves. Yeah, they the, just move around. The curves are there. They're just, some of them they're are lower to the ground. You know, they're just changing position. <laughs> oh, mine are all just a little bit closer to the ground than they were before. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at that orange, woo! I just love it, it is just in your face. Orange is my favorite color. Now, if we do a, stri a stripe of white next to the orange, that white being so bright is really gonna stand out. But if we do a stripe of black next to the orange, the black's a little more subtle. So it'll make the orange really pop like uh, Deanna was just saying, it'll really, the orange will pop if you put black on the other side of it. And if you don't want the orange to pop as much, 
um, then you put you use the white but the white is really going to draw attention to the front of the cardigan it'll be like a really obvious vertical thing but to be perfectly honest I think they both have their place so I'm curious to see what you all think We're still discussing curves. Oh here. yeah, and yeah. and also just like if where the brain... they go, how they end up. <laughs> <laughs> this is the booby cardi after all. This is the booby cardi yes. after all. Yeah, booby cardi. <laughs> We will be adding little ghost appliques at some point. I might go ahead and make up some of those uh, off stream in between live streams just because we have a tutorial for them. It'll it'll be my little ghost applique that I'm using. Um, but I also wanted to include um, some bumblebees because it's the boobie cardi and we don't have a tutorial for that yet. So I am going to design one and we might just do that live um, at some point. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So this row began with a shell, so it ends with a shell, and I'm only doing one row of orange, one stripe. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, love it. Fastening off, and now I'm gonna put this same stripe on the opposite side. So, I need it to be on the front. move you out of the way there we go grab my scissors nope don't need my scissors I need my crochet hook there we go and I'm going to start with a standing double crochet because why not Start with a shell, end with a shell. Chain one in between. Ronald and Kathy are in the house. Hi there, Jones family, how's it going? Good morning, thanks for the Monday morning sunshine. It's raining again here in Indiana, but we love you. Stay frosty, stay crafty. Ron and Kathy, thank you so much. It is a glorious sunny day here. There's just a few clouds rolling in. We had quite a lot of rain this weekend, but uh, the sun is just so welcome after all that rain. It's got that golden hue that the, the fall has. I just love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, make sure that you vote for the neutral stripe up top. I will finish this, this row of orange and then we'll close the poll and whatever the winning neutral is is going to be the next stripe across or I should say up and down the front of this cardigan with every single stitch I add I'm getting more and more excited about this I just love that oh orange and purple I love orange and purple I know it's Halloweeny but I just I love those two colors together when I was a teenager I did I I just I had orange purple and green everything i i used those three colors on everything i i i colored with them constantly i made things with them constantly i just love the three secondary colors together so much um i grew out of that at some point uh i stopped using those three colors for everything but i never really fully let go of of them they're still i think my three favorite go-to colors dizzy d hi d D's been a member for eight months with a membership milestone. You gave us rain in BC this time. It's perfect for me. <laughs> I thought British Columbia, I thought most of the weather that we had out in BC just generally tried to get itself up and over the mountains and then continue itself uh, further east. Um, isn't that kind of the way it goes? Usually the jet stream runs from, from west to east. Am I correct? 
And then everybody in Alberta gets a Chinook when it comes down the mountain. <laughs> Chinook or gigantic hail. Or gigantic hail, yeah. All right, this row began and ended with a shell. Let me grab my scissors. I'm gonna fasten off. I'm gonna weave in all my tails at the end. I'm not interested in doing any tail weaving as I go. Um, because I'm just not in that kind of a mood. In fact, I'm still not completely sure if I'm going to leave some of them out or not so that I get that kind of, kind of a quirky Halloween look going, but I'll probably end up weaving them in just because there's few of them. But, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. okay, I love this. You can really see that defined shell stitch now in that just by doing that one stripe now remember i'm going to be adding trim all the way around so the ends of these rows will also be filled in with purple um, because i've got all this glorious purple now so all of the striping i'm going to be doing is going to be encased in more purple it will resemble long granny rectangles um, to mimic these squares ah uh, that looks fun oh my gosh purple and orange purple and orange happy happy all right, mister, you can end that poll. Choose the next stripe. Black, 65% black, 34% white. Black it is, my dears. I've got my glasses on so I can, and luckily I'll be working across orange, so it'll be a little easier to see those black stitches. Ellen would like to know if you could pull the um, sweater down a little to see the collar area. Of course. One second while I find the end of my black yarn here. Oh, there it is. Okay. So. Get my... It's a work in progress. Yep. So this is now so far the opening of the neck. You'll see I've got all my little tails. I haven't woven in here. I will be adding trim and a collar all the way around. So all of this awkwardness will completely disappear, much like the edging. You can sort of see that where these two um, granny squares met, I've worked shell stitch around them. Um, and of course it just, it just evened that edge right out completely. And so the same thing is gonna happen up here. Um, I don't know if I'll be adding shell stitch around the top. I might, I might, hmm, hmm, hmm. Jada pauses to think. I might work the granny shell stitch of the final two rows of the front build out. I might just go up and all the way around the top. Will I do that? It'll help bring it up and then give me a, well, no, okay, I won't, I won't, wait, will I? I have to consider, I have to consider a uh, buttonholes. I'm gonna talk about buttons in a bit too. Maybe not today, but I'm gonna be using buttons to do up this cardigan. So I'm gonna have to include buttonholes of some kind and I'm currently working on um, sourcing or making some really big buttons. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to get to the end of the next stripe for each side and see how close my two fronts are coming. So anyway, yeah, there's there's the top. So these are the top um, shoulder seams up here and this is the open neck area so far. So I hope that's pretty clear. I'm very focused on this front. Okay, so let me get the black yarn going. So one stripe of black on either side and the last row started with a shell so this row starts with a post or a standing double crochet or slip stitch chain three whichever you're more comfortable with so i'm going to use a standing double crochet because why not there we go um i didn't put it through the whole stitch oh no i did it's just loose all right now, why is that loose? Doesn't matter. Oh. What 
is going on here. All right, you know what? Change of plan. I'm going to join with a slip stitch and chain three because this is acting strangely. Why is that so loose? Well, this is how you fix on the fly, everybody. This was my standing double crochet that I started the row with, and I want to tighten it up. So I am going to loosen up that slip knot that I started with. And I'm just going to tighten it. So let me just pull this out a little bit so I've got some room to maneuver. Pull it right out. Aha! So if I pull on this, and then I'm redoing that knot. There we go. All right. So, <laughs> for some reason, I had a bit of a looseness there right next to my knot when I started the standing double crochet. So I loosened up the knot, tightened up the loop, and then re knotted it again. So that took care of that. Fixing on the fly. All right. So now I'm going to do the standing double crochet. And I'm going to make it a little bit tighter. There we go. So it's standing double crochet, chain one, and now, so it's a post to start and finish each of these rows of black. So it's okay if that's a little bit, is that too tight? Ah, you know what? Shell has a, a chain four. Slash comment. Oh. Shell says, um, I was hoping to see you carry the granny stitch up and around the collar for some hints in going around the corners. Oh, well, in that case. You might have to do like a, a quick fix or something. Well, I also might just, like I said, I'm going to get the two rows of the black neutral on, and then I'm going to see where that leaves me. And if it feels like it makes sense to take the next two rows of purple up and around the corner, um, and maybe down around the bottom, um, we'll do that. We're also getting a lot of suggestions for buttons. Oh! Ghost <laughs> buttons, B buttons, white buttons. You don't have little little bees or ghosts buttons, do you? Um, I don't, but I just want to say, um, before the live stream, I was, I think I was talking buttons with the, the family members in that post. And I've got, so I've got a few ideas. I may as well talk buttons while I'm busy crocheting this row of straight stitch. All right, I have got um, some very large round plastic black buttons. Um, they're, they're huge. They're like maybe two inches or more in diameter. They're really big. They're like, they're like novelty buttons. And I love them and I picked them up a while ago. I also have some equally large uh, purple buttons. So in this case, the, the, the crazy novelty buttons, purple and black buttons, would work out really well on this cardigan. But I was also considering making buttons um, just because I thought it's kind of a fun opportunity to, to have some fun with making buttons. And I, I'm trying to decide I'm trying to decide like which way to go. I can't decide if I want to, I want sort of the, the interest of the big novelty plastic buttons, which just picture an old fashioned plastic button with the four holes in the middle, but make it ridiculously large and shiny plastic. So I've got black ones and purple ones and they would be perfect for this and they wouldn't look out of place because it's kind of a bonkers Halloween cardigan. Um, but I also thought it might be kind of fun to make some so I don't know, I'm not sure which way I'm gonna go, but I'm thinking I'm gonna make nice big round buttons because um, the appliques are going to be the bees and the boos. <laughs> and I don't, um, I don't want to make, I don't want to use, um, I don't have any buttons that are cute novelty shapes that are big enough. Like I need statement buttons for this, this cardigan, so. Uh, but I do love the button chat. I love buttons. Mr. and Stitches, I can hear you snickering. <laughs> we're, having the... we're having our own little party over here. Well, good. <laughs> All right. 
right. This row begins and ends with a post or a double crochet. So there we go. That's the that's the row of black done. And We're all singing the Ghostbusters tune, but we're saying ghost buttons instead. <laughs> Thanks to Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> ghost buttons. <laughs> <laughs> ghost buttons. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, everybody. Knocked you all sideways. All right. I'm going to do the row of black on this side and then we're going to go back to the purple and I think I think we might we might indulge shell and do the whole all the way around the corner thing because uh, around the collar because I think I think that's I think that's going to look right stylistically anyway because I want to add a little bit of trim but I might not need too much I don't know we are building this as we go because I did not make a bunch of cardigan. I didn't make a bunch of squares with the idea of making a sweater. I've decided to make a sweater by using up a bunch of squares I had. So because I'm doing that, I get to I get to sort of design it as I go. And every single piece that's going into this cardigan is part of the design build that you would have to come up against anyway. So if you're making yourself a cardigan, you know, all of these different decisions, you know, what what's the base square going to be? What kind of trim am I going to use? Am I going to build out the front a little bit more? How am I going to do that? Am I going to make it a sweater instead of a cardigan? So these are all kind of questions you would be asking yourself, um, regardless of the kind of colors you chose or how many squares you might want to use, etc. Um, putting together a cardigan and a sweater is essentially making a front, a back and sleeves and making sure it fits on over your head. Um, and there's all these different ways you can go about doing that. So, row of black. <laughs> Dawn says she has rolls instead of curves. I like, I like to say that I've got all the same curves I had in high school, it's just that they're all closer to the ground now. <laughs> all right, this row began with a double crochet post, so it will end with a double crochet post. Get that little tail out of the way. I will weave in tails later. All right. <clears throat> or work over top of them, depending on what stitch I use. So fastened off. Here we go. Let's take a look at where we're at. <clears throat> Dawn says, no way, Jade. I saw your shawl tutorial last night, and you're still a lovely lady. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, but Even I'm serious. With your curves closer to the ground. They are much closer to the ground, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all know ourselves. We're all our worst critics. I don't know why we're so hard on ourselves, but we are. We shouldn't be. We really shouldn't. Okay. So here we go. Oh, look at that. Good choice with the black, everybody. There is that little stretch of black. So now I've got these lovely, all right. So my next plan is to do two rows of the purple and that should overlap the front and the back. And then if I do a final row of like, I do want like a pretty nice, like close over. You know, when you, you put on a cardigan, if there's not enough of an edge, um, like it'll gap a little bit. Like if you bend over, like it, your your sweater gaps, it'll it'll be less likely to do that if there's lots of fold over. So this side really folds over the other side, kind of thing. So I'm not afraid of having too much build out across the front, and I'm thinking that two rows of the purple on both sides is a good place to start, and then I can add more trim if I feel it needs it. 
Uh, plus, if I do the two rows of purple continually going up and around the corollary and down and then around the bottom, um, and why not? I'm going to, now does that mean I should seam up my two edges first? Hmm. Starting to look more and more like a sweater. I could also just go all the way around and then turn around and go all the way back. Maybe I'll do that and worry about the bottom. I will. Okay, so let's in, let's indulge shell. We're going to go up and around the collar using that shell stitch pattern. Um, I'm going to use purple. I'm going to go start at the bottom, work all the way up, go around the collar, and then come all the way back down the other side, turn around, and then do it in reverse. Um, so let's do that. Okay, purple. I'm going to get some of these balls of yarn out of the way. I don't think I need this right now. I'll just move that around. I think I'm done with that for now. I'm going to keep that out. Get this out of the way. Dealing with limited space here. All right. Okay, dokie. So let's get the orange out of the way. I'm going to worry about going around the bottom later because I haven't stitched up my side seams yet because I haven't made final decisions on my sleeves. So the last two things we're going to do today is the two rows of purple that go all the way up the front, around the collar, and back down the other side. Let's do that. And then I'm going to worry about buttons and buttonholes and stuff at a later date. So let's start with this. Um, plus, I'm assuming that once I have this all stitched together, because I do have a bit of a bosom, um, I, this is going to pull pull apart a little bit, so those two rows of purple what might just end up meeting just barely overlapping in the front. So I've got plenty of time to put on extra trim. Um, if I go with buttons, I don't know. Guys, this is such a, a work in progress. We'll see. I might just like the way it looks um, with a little bit of trim and no buttons. I don't know. All right, here we go. This is the front right. This is the front left. This is the bottom. I'm starting at the bottom. This row begins with a shell and it will end with a shell because the previous row began and ended with a post. So starting with a shell, it's a three double crochet into that space. Let me get the rest of this out of the way so you can sort of see what I'm doing. I'm going to do that regular shell stitch all the way up the front and then we get to the neck and we will start that party when we get up there. <laughs> you gone back to purple or is that black? No, it's purple. It's hard to tell from this angle. Yes, it will be a little more obvious in a moment. Mm -hmm. um, so there's We've got purple, orange, black, purple. Yes, I see the purple. So now we're back to purple. Nice. Of course, there'll be two rows. So what are you of that. working on? The inner edge? Yeah. So this is the this this is the inner edge is that of the where two the buttons front are panels. Gonna go? Pardon? The ghost buttons. The ghost buttons. We're gonna worry about buttons later. First, I want to get. We're all excited about the buttons here. I, <laughs> I get that. I love buttons. <laughs> I want to work out. I want to work out the front build out before I start worrying about trim and buttons and closures and, and all that. So, um, and this this whole thing of working the shell stitch back and forth is so that I don't have to make half granny squares or smaller granny squares. But I'm continuing that shell stitch pattern, and I am having a lot of fun with the color. I think it kind of helps to. Um, draw some attention and interest to the front of the cardigan. It makes it a bit different, but not entirely different from the squares that are sort of most of the construction. Oh, the orange looks like pumpkins. Oh my gosh, would it be insane to add little 
little green dots. I say uh, make it the ugliest Halloween sweater on the planet. Let's say we go like full ugly Halloween. Like full ugly. Yeah. All of those little things become pumpkins. I th that's totally possible. <laughs> This is why Summer said uh -oh. I should have the green handy. Uh-oh, the light bulb's going off. Yep, the light bulb's going off. Okay. We have a gifted membership from Nico. Nico! Thank you, Nico. Nico with another gift of a membership. And looks like Ellen has won it. Congratulations, Ellen. All right. Here is my shell at the top. And I'm going to pause for a second and get some water. Okay, if you've made a granny, mitered granny shell, or <clears throat> mitered granny square, I should say, then this might look familiar to you. When you get up to, when you finish working a mitered granny shell, you always have like this edge of um, half, like a side of the shells and posts, because this is sort of where two of your rows end or, or you have two edges that are unfinished because you've been working only the, the stitch going back and forth and back and forth and so you have a corner but you've got edges that look like this on two sides of your square so the way to clean that up is when you finish up a granny mitered a mitered granny a mitered granny square you add a row or two of regular shell stitch using the granny square method where in every single corner you'd work shell, chain two, shell, or shell, chain, shell, whatever your corners like to be. And you treat the spaces running along the edge of your shell or your square, just like a regular chain one space. And you're hopping over the sides of the shells like you would hop over the top of a shell. So when you get up to the top of your neck, your opening here, you're using that shell stitch, you just do a corner, chain two, work another, three double crochet or a shell in that same space up at the top and then continue with the pattern. So you've got an outside corner. So when you come up to an outside corner and an outside corner is defined by the point of the corner is pointing out. An inside corner is when you get up to the corner but you're on the inside of the corner. So this is you're on the outside of the corner or you're on the inside of the corner. We're about to come up on an inside of a corner and we'll talk about that when I get there. So still shell, chain one, shell, chain one, all the way across. Okay, so let me just open this up here. All right, this is the inside edge. Let me get this in position so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the neck hole of my sweater. So this is the front panel on one side, this is the front panel on the other. I've just come up with the front panel over here. I've turned the corner, shell, chain two shell, very typical corner. And now I've reached the inside edge. So I've got a space, I've got a shell, or I've got a, a join where two squares have come together, I've got another space, I've got another space. It's kind of a complicated mess in here. So when you get to the inside of this, remember that you're not looking at it as a two-dimensional thing. This isn't a blanket. This is something that's going to be sitting open around your neck. You're bringing a collar up. You have to build up a collar so that it can lay flat. So what you want to do is continue to work the regular shell stitch, but you don't want too many. Like you wouldn't want to work one here, one here, one here, and one here, because that's just too much. But because you're sort of on an inside corner, you want to, you want to create, you want to focus on the, the leading edge, the last row of your work being straight and even. So don't worry about too much about what's below that edge. So you see, for example, this is the last row I've been working on and, I, and I'm looking at it, making sure that it's nice and smooth and flat. I come up to this edge. This is the top of that front panel. I've got a nice corner. Everything's still laying fl flat and smooth. When I get up here, I wanna make sure that 
I still am maintaining a nice smooth edge on my last row. And in order to do that, I might have to do, I might have to try a couple things. So don't be afraid to try a couple things. Maybe you think, well, maybe I want two shells in here. Well, maybe I only want one. Well, try it. So what I'm going to do to start, I'm going to keep trying to make this so you can see how I'm looking at it. So this is the front panel top. And here I'm turning into the edge of my, my neck. I've got a seam join and a seam join, and then this is the back of the neck opening. So seam join at the shoulder, a regular seam join across my granny squares, and I want to curve this and make it nice and flat. So I've got some options. I've got this space, this seam edge, this space, this seam edge, and this space before I get back to a full shell again. So I'm hopping over this shell, which means that I should probably work right into this seam edge because that mimics what I was doing down here. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to pick up right in the seam edge and I'm going to work a shell and a chain one. Okay. Now I'm confronted with a space, a, a seam, a space, and another shell. So I'm going to remove that chain one I did, which will just remove one less sort of stitch in between shells. And I'm going to put a shell right in the edge of this seam because that keeps continuity with the shells I'm placing in the edges of seams. Then I'm going to stop. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to see if it looks like it's too much in one place before I continue. So there's my shell. Now I would chain one and continue with the pattern. So let me just do that. That gives me a little bit of leeway on the other side, and then I will explain what I've been doing again. So here comes the hook. Okay. Here is the edge. There's the front panel. Front panel comes up, turns a corner, and then right away I'm into um, an edge around my neck. And I want that to eventually stand up because I'm going to be folding it back over. Now I took out that one extra chain thinking it might be a bit too busy in here, but I think, I think that makes it too close together. So I'm gonna put that chain back. So what I did was I opted to work a shell in the edge of each of those seams because they happen one right after the other. So that keeps the continuity of me working a shell into the seam edge between granny squares. I'm going to continue to work a chain in between because that gives me just enough. See now if I lay it flat, I have a I have a natural corner happening in here where my sweater wants to curve around my neck, but it doesn't make anything look too tight and it doesn't make anything look flared out. And of course that is going to fit around my neck. So if I just use my wrist here, you'll see that it lays flat around the curve of my wrist. It's not too much space. It's not too little. Yeah, I think that works. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. First, I'm going to just work across the back. So this is the back of the neck. Marie says, Jada, is there a way to crochet a mini backpack to use? Um, the answer, of course, is yes. <laughs> a backpack is just a bag with straps that you can, that are equal, equal size that fit comfortably over your shoulder. So, um, I mean, a backpack can be any size you want. Just make sure that if you are, you know, treat it like any other bag project, make sure you make it with strong fibers, preferably cotton or something that doesn't want to stretch out on you and be mindful of what you're putting in it because you don't want it to strain your straps or strain the, the, 
the weight of the bag itself. And since it's going to be a backpack, make your 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 um, straps nice and wide so they fit comfortably over your shoulder. And those straps will distribute the weight of whatever's in your bag evenly over your shoulders. If you want to make it to put wallet or phone or keys, you're going to want to line it, I think. Because you, you don't want to lose that stuff through the, the little holes. Absolutely. Speaking of which, um, I've got two or more really great photos from um, Peggy, who sent some photos of her finished shell stitch market bags to me at the shop, and they're lined. I'm going to share those with you guys this week. She did an absolutely gorgeous job lining her market bags um, with really cute fabric and she included zippers in them and uh, the best way to, to explain it is just to show you the photos so we'll, we'll do a post about those um, so if you're looking for some inspiration on adding lining she made it she made it look amazing so <laughs> I can't wait to show that with you guys so shell chain one shell chain one I'm around the other side now and I'm putting the shells in the seam edges it's definitely coming together with a Halloween party vibe. Absolutely. Yes. Well, I like to wear Halloween-y looking things before Halloween that aren't necessarily all like full-on costumes. <laughs> all right, now back to the other edge. So I might just work over top of the base of those tails. And now I'm in the other top edge of the cardigan. So I'm going to go shell, chain two, shell, and I'm going to start working down the other side. Hey, Jada. Yeah. Would you consider yourself a yarnaholic? Am I a yarnaholic? Mm hmm. Like, do I have a problem kind of yes. thing? Yes. <laughs> do you have a problem that we need to discuss? Um. Do I have a yarnaholic problem? Just to think about it. I have to think about it. I want to say, I want to say, yes, I'm a yarnaholic. <laughs> but I, I think I'm actually more well, possessed. Well, the fact that I can't sit in the craft room with you, I think that might be a, a red flag. <laughs> I do have a lot of yarn. <laughs> I think I'm, I think I'm, I, I think, like, I love yarn and I love to, to collect it, but I think I actually like to crochet more than I like to collect yarn. So I think... I think I might be more of a crochet-holic than I am a yarnaholic. Okay. So that, I realize one fair. habit supports I, the I other. I would say you crochet more than you buy yarn. Yeah. I, I, I realize one habit sort of supports the other. That fits. <laughs> but that fits. We're, uh, we've got some yarnaholics in the chat. Absolutely. Do we have any crochet-aholics in the chat? <laughs> what about knit-aholics? Do we have I any love knitting. Knitters I absolutely. I adore knitting, but I just, it's just, I crochet's faster. So I always reach for my hooks. You also prefer sewing, but you always default to crochet. Yes. Sewing is Probably my. Probably because you can whip it up quicker. Yeah. Well, plus, I, I feel like I have more control over the design of something ah. when I'm working stitch by stitch as opposed to having. It also requires a lot less equipment. Yes. Yeah. Right? I don't have to haul it Because you just need machine. your hook and yarn. Mm hmm. Oh, we do have some knitaholics in, in the chat. Oh, I love knitting. We have some bi crafty aholics. That I would call Jada a bi crafty aholic. Yeah, I love crafts, period. Like just anything and anything I, crafty. Anything, anything that I can, if I can make it with my own two hands, I'm generally interested. <laughs> if I had more strength, I'd probably be seriously into woodworking because I just love wood. Um, uh, anything heck hand me some concrete i'll do something with that too <laughs> like, <laughs> just don't throw it at me just don't throw it at anybody no. yeah it's much it's a much easier thing to be hit with a ball of yarn than a ball of concrete <laughs> i'll take the ball of yarn <laughs> over the concrete block <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm down at the bottom of the other side and before i turn around and go back i'm just going to show you how it looks so let me just pull that up Ah, we also have patternaholics. Oh, yeah. Justina likes to collect patterns. So do I. That makes sense. I would say Jada collects a lot of patterns, too. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I spend a lot of time writing them, too. So, so... in other words, we're, everyone's an everything-aholic. Yeah. <laughs> How about all-aholics? All-aholics. 
An allaholic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's how the front looks. I'll pull it down in a second. That is the first row. Yeah, so that's the first row of that purple striping. I'm going to turn around and go all the way back. And these will probably just basically meet. Keeping in mind, there's going to be a little extra pull right around here for the chest area. Um, and that doesn't include any of the trim I'm adding. So I'm already really glad I went with this option because I'm going to be including a lot of purple around the top, maybe a little more purple around the bottom. I'm starting the collar. So here's how it looks. Let me get these little threads out of the way. So now you see that smoothing of the corner, the top of the edge, it's smoothed around and we've got a, an open, a round opening. Um, I've got it's gonna it's gonna sit up nicely so it's not too it's not flared out it's not too tight so that's how we take that shell stitch all the way up and around the top i opted to put them in the uh seam edges because i'm continuing with that what i did down here so that that is a, a design continuation but also it just works there's enough space and um, flexibility between these two shells with the chain one to reach across the where those those sort of seams end up coming together because it is kind of an awkward little corner but it works um, very pleased about that now of course I haven't added there's going to be extra trim all of these little tails are going to get woven in it's going to look very neat and tidy on the inside um, all right so I'm going to turn around and do one more row back and I'm loving how this looks this looks very um, very much like a like a a vest that purple or that orange really really stands out okay so I finished down here so that row ended with a shell so I've got a chain four which counts as a double crochet chain one and turn the whole thing around and start working back. Whoops, did it again. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> uh, we're, getting, um... we're getting a lot of requests for a hood. Oh, Would a you hood. consider putting a hood on that sweater? I just, I want to mention, I mentioned in the chat earlier, we do have a few hood patterns, um, video tutorials and patterns in our Etsy shop. I, I remember two. Do you, do you know if there's more than two? Well, the Three hood. Three of you include the uh, fairy tale cloak. Yeah, the the hood that would work best. Um, actually, I think we've got four. We, have, we a, have four. Okay, can you remind everyone? Yeah, I forget. So I'd say that the two best options for um, this sweater would be the hood that we built for the poncho. But if you want to continue the granny square theme because you're using the, the classic shell stitch, then you, you might want to do what we did for the big poncho build. We did a granny square poncho. It was a live show. You basically just make two large granny squares um, that you then seam together across the top and the back so that it opens out to be a hood. And then you stitch the bottom part of it around the neck opening of your cardigan. Um, give me one second. I'm going to grab the other poncho. I just happened Big to have Welcome to here. Sharon for joining um, a new channel member. Thank you, Sharon, for joining Alpaca Level. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> Quick sip of water. <laughs> All right, guys, you will probably, a lot of you will remember this. This is our granny square poncho. It's the poncho I made using all the granny squares from the granny square game. And I made a giant hood to go on it. So a neck opening on a sweater a neck opening on a cardigan, a neck opening on a poncho. It's basically a round hole. And you've got an opening in the front for either the opening of the cardigan or just for your face, right? Remember, there's a, there's a, if there's a neck hole, there's got to be a face hole. <laughs> 
So this is the hood. It is a very large granny square times two. I seamed it down the back and across the top. So that's that's in, a, in a, an, invert, an inverted L shape, basically. Then it opens up. So there's the opening. And then from the bottom, the bottom all the way around to the other side is what you stitch around the edge of your neck hole. And then the whole thing opens like this. So now in this case, like a sweater, uh, a poncho meets in the front, a sweater meets in the front. So the opening bottom of your hood would be right under your chin. On a cardigan, it's just going to be open like it is on our uh, fairy tale cloak. And you can also look at the hood construction on the fairy tale cloak. And you can look at the hood construction in our hooded scarf. So it's the same concept, squares being folded in half, being stitched across the top and the bottom. And then it's the bottom edging that gets attached to the neck hole. And you get this, I lined mine with fleece. So this is just, <laughs> this is so warm. I, I absolutely love this poncho. Um, but that's all you have to do. So you can, you can make a couple of granny squares or if you're making um, your, your, your cardigan or your sweater in a solid stitch, you just increase, you can continue, you can work right off the, um, the hood or the, the neck collar. Like you go work all the way around to the chin, turn around, come all the way back to the chin, all the way back. So you work back and forth in a, a constant circle and you just keep making it tall, 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 tall. Then you pinch together the top and seam the top together. And you've made yourself, you can, so you can attach you can make it separately and attach it, or you can build it right off the neck hole. Um, but if you wanna, if you're using granny squares, then I, my advice is to make a couple of really big granny squares. And you can you can cheat them into the bottom too. Like if you make really large granny squares, there's nothing saying that you can't just sort of like, when you go to attach it to the neck hole, if the neck opening has fewer stitches than the bottom edge of your um, your hood, just cheat cheat some of the like use use some of your neck stitches twice when you're sewing down the larger edge of your hood just evenly disperse that and it'll it'll work out completely evenly um this obviously is a huge hood it's it's massive um i know you're going to ask for measurements so this granny square <laughs> this was a 15 inch granny square absolutely massive made two of them makes for a beautiful deep hood very, very warm poncho. I'll stuff that behind me. So yeah, um, that would be a lot of fun. This is very light, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, I guess I could add a light little poncho. You know what, guys? We'll see. We'll see. Making uh, making a couple of granny squares. Now that I have the purple yarn, uh, making a couple more granny squares isn't that big a deal. I love that poncho, uh, Vivi. I, I, it, it's, it was such a fun thing to make all those squares during the granny square game and then actually turn them into, I think we even live streamed that, the poncho construction. It, um, it, it's cozy. It's a great use of scraps. It looks, it looks intentional as opposed to like just random. <laughs> But that hood, oh my gosh, that hood would that hood that hood would keep me warm in the Arctic. It is so cozy. Oops, forgot to chain one. Don't forget to chain one. So now I'm working back in the opposite direction, which is going to take me back around the inside of the collar. Shell, if you're still out there, was that helpful? Taking the, uh, the shell stitch around the, the collar like that? I'm curious to, to know what you think.
Apple cake with cognac? Um, yes, please. Um, to answer Angela's question, if you're referring to the um, the sweater Jade is working on now, we only have the live streams. We do not have a full tutorial. So there's we're on part three. This is and we have part one and two out there. Um, anything else, Poncho? I think we have a few ponchos on our channel. The uh, the poncho, the granny, the one I just the showed, granny that granny poncho. square poncho. Do we, we did, have that one? We have that. It's all live streams. The whole thing oh, was... Oh, that one's all live streams. It was constructed during live streams, so you can see it going together. Okay, do you remember the titles? I don't remember yep. the... It's it's um, granny square poncho. Um, if you search granny square poncho on the channel, you'll get first our large granny square poncho, which was a tutorial. And then you'll see the series of live streams, which was literally constructing the poncho with the smaller granny squares. We've got a, um, a layout template that you can use for free. It's over on our website. All of that is included in the live streams that we did. Um, and that was a series. That was like two or three of, of them. Maybe a year ago? Uh, yeah, about a year maybe, ago. Maybe about a year ago. Oh, good. Go to so, our channel homepage and go to the live area. Yeah click on the live tab and then search through there. Shell says it was helpful. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, all right, I'm back up to the top and I'm gonna do the same thing. I've reached that corner space. So I'm gonna work three double crochet, chain two for the corner and three double crochet. This takes me back around the other direction and continuing. So now I'm working across the top of that front panel. No thinking required on the second row because I'm just putting in a shell in a space, making sure that I chain one. Working a shell into the next space. We're looking at the inside of my cardigan because I'm working back in the opposite direction. And now I'm working across the inside back edge of the collar. Before I forget, I know not everybody sees the posts that go out on the community tab for various reasons. You might miss them just because they, they're kind of periodical um, or for whatever reason your software might not serve them to you. But on Friday, we posted our Fair Isle style mushroom pattern um, up in the shop. So a lot of people asked for a mushroom. The mushroom, the Fair Isle style mushroom is the pattern perk for the Silk and Vicuña members this month. Um, so the members pattern for that is up on the members site. Um, and for everybody else, we've got a full length uh, pattern in the Etsy shop too. So that's that cute little Fair Isle mushroom. Looks like our for app mushroom. has decided to fall asleep again. Um, Claire purchased the pattern in our shop recently. Oh, thank you, Claire. I will pop in and make sure I thank everybody. I don't know why it does that. It's almost like it goes, well, I've said a few things for the day. I'm just going to go back to sleep now and we have a gifted membership from Nico Nico thank you Nico Nico is our super patron Maritza has won it congratulations Maritza so I'm coming across the front of the other side that's the top of the other panel and now I've reached the other corner this is the top corner so three double crochet chain two, three double crochet in the same place. And now I've turned, I'm going to turn and start heading down the other inside front edge. And that will be two rows of that granny shell stitch to finish off the purple. And then I'm probably going to concern myself with the sleeves next. So I've already decided I, I want a larger arm sleeve hole than I was originally thinking because I want this to be comfortable. Um, so I will be stitching up the sleeve edges. Actually, that's not true. I don't know if I'm gonna stitch up the sleeve edges and work 
the sleeves onto the existing hole or if I'm going to create I'm going to do more of this back and forth shell stitch and then seam up the bottom all together like a bat wing. I think, you know, it might be easier to do that. Um, so we'll definitely be working on the sleeves in our next live stream. Oh, uh, big apology to Claire. Claire wanted a, wanted the cha-ching to go oh, off. Oh, Claire, but I'm so sorry. Sometimes it just has a mind of its own. It was literally working like 20, 30 minutes it, ago. It so I really have was. no idea why it does that. Um, we've tried everything. Let me see if I can find out what's going on. I have no idea why. Um, Nico says that the, the cha-ching sounds have banker's hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they go on strike. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe it's gone on breaks, lunch break or on strike. Who knows? Entirely possible. Okay, I'd like to thank Deanna... Pamela and Claire for picking up some patterns. Claire may have just broken the yap because she bought nine patterns. Oh, Thank you, Claire. That, that's what happened. That's what she happened. broke it. Claire, you broke the app. <laughs> nine patterns all at once? Nine all at once. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, yes, it should have cha-chinged. Oh, goodly. Well, that is frustrating. Well, thank you very much, Claire. Um, yes, Claire just broke the app. That's all. <laughs> Leslie says we need to take the pool noodle to the uh, tablet. I agree. Whack, whack, whack. I need a, I need a miniature pool noodle. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm going to finish this off. And then we're going to lay it flat and see where we're at. I really like the build out of the front of this cardigan. I feel like it's going to, it's continued with the concept of the shell stitch. It's brought a little order to the chaos of the granny squares um and it's very variable so for example if you try on your cardigan and realize because you are well endowed and you think oh no it's not going to close properly you can add a few more rows of this shell stitch you can add as many rows as you want um until it looks and feels comfortable and then you can worry about trim so ending with a double crochet I'm gonna fasten off worrying about tail weaving later. All right, let's see where we're at. Do do do. Okay, so I'm gonna worry about side seams and sleeves on the next live stream. I'm still mulling the sleeves over. And here we go. Give this a little bit of a hand flattening. So This, this is more like it. Okay, so I'm just starting to get a little bit of overlap here. Ah, oh, it's starting to look more and more like an actual um, vest. Okay, so I've got a little bit of overlap happening, which is perfect because I want to consider buttons and extra trim and I don't want there to be a, a, a gap sort of I don't like I don't want there to be a gap in between the edges of my um, my sweater when I put it on and I button it up I don't want there to be a gap between buttons so I want it to have <laughs> did you just did you just <laughs> what just happened it's the foghorn for all our pattern purchases <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> that literally startled me. I thought, what is that? <laughs> Here is how the neck is shaping up up top. This looks really good. So it's starting to stand up. Um, the higher it gets, the more it will, it will bend down um, and we'll have like an actual proper collar up there. Um, ignore all my little tails. I haven't woven them in yet. Uh, that'll look nice and neat and tidy eventually. You won't notice the difference. So there we go. We've got what is starting to look like an actual vest, which is the base of your cardigan. That is your back, your front. I've got my sleeve openings over here. I'm going to make nice big open sleeves because I want nice wide sleeves. I'm thinking bat wing, not all the way from the waist bat wing, but like maybe halfway up my torso bat wing but we will look into that for the next live stream. But there is the front build out of the cardigan done. Ah, I feel like that 
that brings some order to the chaos. I really like how those stripes worked out. It looks intentional. It looks like it, it looks like I've got granny rectangles almost running down the front edge of the sweater. Yes, love it. Okay, are there any questions about the build process so far that I may have missed? Um, I'm gonna grab some water. So if you guys wanna put some questions in the chat, if you've got any, I'm gonna grab some water. I'll be right back. Right, back with the water. What have we got? I'm really loving this. I'm thinking for the sleeves, my original thought process, let's talk a bit about that while I'm waiting for any questions you guys might have. My original thought process was that I was going to do orange sleeves and then end with the grannies. But because I have this purple, I think I'm gonna do majority purple sleeves, a great big band of orange and black, and then it's gonna terminate in a cuff, a big wide granny cuff. I'm gonna use these grannies at the bottom around the cuff, and then I'll, I'll put like a little edging around the bottom just so they, they kind of like gather in a little bit. Um, so that's the plan. And like I said, now that I've got the purple, I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna continue, and I'm gonna do purple sleeves. Um, with just this sort of the same the same color pattern in the sleeves and I might do that just before I get to the uh, the granny squares at the bottom of the sleeve yes that's what I'm gonna do so the majority of the sleeve is gonna be this purple then I'm gonna I'm gonna mimic this color patterning and then into the the cuffs which are granny squares at the bottom that's gonna look so cool and intentional. I'm so happy I got this purple. It's practically the same. I can't see any difference between them. What luck that is. Any tips for snug stretchy cuffs and waist? Yes. Um, if you, if it's cuffs and you've just put them on um, and it's too tight, I recommend undoing them and redoing them. So don't, uh, if, if, the, if the cuff pattern had you decreasing too, like, too much so that it's too tight, then um, take it out and don't use as many decreases and let it be a little more open. It, same thing around the bottom, or you can do what Shell did in her live stream, or I should say her uh, blog where she talked about the build that she did. Um, you leave the bottom to the front and the back. You leave a little slit open at the back, or I should at the, say, at, say at the side, and that just sits over top of our hips a lot nicer. Um, and you can make it like a tall slit, you can make it a short slit. Um, if that edging has already worked in, then you might want to take it out <laughs> and redo it. I know that sounds frustrating, um, but uh, if you really do love the work of the sweater and you really want to wear it, you want it to be comfortable. So it's perfectly all right to take out, um, to take out some work and redo it in order to get that being a comfortable fit. Um, if it's a if it's a tall if it's brand new it might want to stretch out a little bit already on its own so um, see if there's any give like give it a little pull here and there see if it's any give but if it's just too snug then you definitely want to take it out and redo it um, yes 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 next live I don't know uh, typically we do them on Mondays we are heading into fall this weekend we haven't fully solidified our fall schedule yet um, so We'll be working on that. We'll Our certainly... fall schedule is we're retiring. Yeah, <laughs> the mister really wants to retire. We're going to officially retire this fall, <laughs> which is next week. Claire, the purple yarn. This was um, this this is discontinued color. I don't know why they would discontinue this. It's such a gorgeous purple. Uh, it was discontinued. It was available at the Lens Mill store online. They might still have some. It's in the discontinued section uh, or discount section. So see if they still have some um, and pick it up. I recommend it. My gosh, what a gorgeous, rich purple that is. Hey, that's a real royal purple. I love that. Uh, we, I did a, um, we have a haul video coming for you on everything I did manage to get at my last, I, I do yarn shopping hauls so seldom. I thought I like to share, <laughs> mainly because this one was just such a good deal. 
Um, I'm all, I think I'm more interested in a good deal than I <laughs> than I am in the yard. <laughs> Um, okay. No so one's going to accept our our res resignation. We're, we're not, eh? All right. Nope. Well, <laughs> everyone's grabbing our res resignation letter and shredding it. Krista says, "Jade, are you going to do the green dots on the top of the orange?" Yeah, I'm not sure, Krista. Um, I'm thinking uh, this is just a quick little like these do kind of look a little bit pumpkiny, and I just thought, wouldn't that be cute? Let me just like mimic it here for a second. If it looked, if there was just a little bit of of green on top of the purple, um. It's tiny. It's a subtle. It's a subtle detail. It might. It might give it a pumpkiny look. But I also might just do some pumpkin appliques. Um, I've got two or three different tutorials on those alone. Um, I don't know. Again, like I said, this green doesn't show up anywhere. There's no green in the rest of the sweater. So I'm. I'm kind of hemming and hawing about whether or not I'll bring green into it. But. We will see. I kind of like that idea. It gave me an idea for something else. <laughs> this happens a lot around here. <laughs> yeah, like a line of green color. I'm thinking there would be a way to like, well, I mean, you could literally go in and add it after the fact. That's the fun thing about the shell stitch. The shell stitch gives you big spaces and you can do things through those spaces. You can weave. You can do surface chaining. Um, so there's ways to like add little details to your shells with yarn after the fact. Um, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure I wanna do that. I'm not sure. Still thinking about it. Maybe a light brown instead of a green, says Angela. Yeah, yeah, brown would be more in keeping with the, the stem color, but it also might disappear because of the, the black and the, the orange, or I should say the black and the purple, brown's kind of a darker color. So the green would pop a little bit, but there's no green anywhere else in the sweater. So eh, I'm gonna get that, I'm gonna let that um, percolate <laughs> in the old, the old idea factory. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna think about it. I, I kind of like the idea, but I'm thinking maybe there might be a way to... I'm gonna get the sleeves done first. So because the sleeves are gonna have the same color patterning in it, we're gonna see how that looks. And then maybe we'll go back, because you can go back and add detail. I mean, on, you can add detail on top of detail on top of detail. So the way I like to design wearables is to get the basic construction done and then go in with the details. So for example, the appliques, the pockets, um, little edging trim details, maybe adding stems or something to like make these look a little bit more pumpkin-y. If I do that, it's gonna be something I kind of lean into at the end because now like my first concern is making something that fits me comfortably. Then I can start having fun with like little additional details. And the fun thing with crochet is that you can, you don't always have to build the detail in at the construction phase. You can turn around and add it later if you want. Um, so I'm probably, I don't know, I'm gonna look at doing that a little bit. Like I say, I'm gonna let that mull. I'm gonna mull that idea over. I think that's really fun. <laughs> okay, guys, I think that's it for today. I think we went for about a little bit, almost two hours. So we're gonna call it there. That's the front built out. Uh, the next stream will be sleeves. Not exactly sure when that stream is going to be yet. We're gonna work on our um, fall schedule. We haven't even taken our summer vacation yet. Uh, we usually take a couple weeks off in the summer every year and we never- In August. In August. And we didn't get around to that we this year. We didn't get around to our vacation. So- uh, What is going on? We do need to take a break now and then if for no other reason so that my, 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 my wrists can take a break. <laughs> so we're still working all that out too. Uh, but we'll keep you abreast of what's going on. But this week is yummy and full. We've got um, we've got a quick technique tip video coming for you this week. And we have a video on Friday. So we've got two extra videos coming out or an extra video over and above what we usually do coming out this week. Um, and we will figure out the next best time to do the next installment live of the sweater. And we'll keep you all informed like we like to do around here. Um, 
feel free to pop into our Etsy shop and share photos with us if you've got uh, completed projects of any of the things that we've done here. Um, and if it's okay to share the, fit, the photos with the community, please let us know in your little message. You can go to the shop, click on message seller, um, or just go to the existing message thread that you might have with the shop and just upload photos there. There's um, either a little camera icon you click on or a little landscape photo that you click on and it'll let you add a photo or take a photo if you're on a mobile phone. Um, and um, we'll see you guys soon. Mr. And Stitches, anything you wanna add? Um, I think I've added enough. You've added chat. enough? Yep. You probably have, yes. <laughs> oh, we've been joking all kinds. <laughs> Uh, no, I think we'll let everyone know we, we are most likely going to take our little break soon. Yeah, soon. Um, that we missed in August. Yeah. But we'll keep everyone posted we'll... with the community tab posts, yes. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's it. Big thank you to everyone that um, supports us. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much to everybody who has picked up a pattern. Uh, given us a, a super chat or or a mi membership milestone has joined the channel. Thank you to Nico for getting people to join the channel, <laughs> whether they want to or not. <laughs> and thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being here and thank you for spending time with us. This is uh, probably the best community on the planet. We are fun, friendly, we're creative, we're colorful, and we, we really love to sort of cheer each other on. So I really appreciate you guys for that. This is a fun build. I'm enjoying this, this Halloween booby cardi sweater uh, construction, and uh, we will continue with it on the next live stream. So until then, stay safe, stay crafty. We will see you, if not before, then definitely Friday, plus our little extra special uh, video coming in the middle of the week. Um, and we'll see you soon. So take care, everybody. Have a great week.